Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the new 2020 Huawei MateBook X Pro. A big thank you to Huawei for sending this over as I've been keen to have a proper play with this since I first got hands on earlier this year. So the X Pro is the flagship of the MateBook series and it starts at £1400 here in the UK. So with this 2020 model, Huawei has gone with a more, if it ain't broke, don't fix it approach. The biggest upgrade is we now get Intel's latest 10th gen processors. We also get a more advanced form of Huawei Share, which now includes multi-collaboration, where you can essentially use your Huawei or on a phone on the laptop. Plus there's a fancy new emerald green color, along with the regular Mystic Silver and the Space Gray, which I have here. So a new processor, improved Huawei Share, and a new color. That's about it for 2020. But honestly, that's no bad thing at all. This is still a stunning laptop and one of my absolute favorites to use. Now I've got the top spec model here, which will set you back 1700 pounds. But for that, we get an i7 10510U, an NVIDIA GeForce MX250 graphics chip, plus 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of SSD storage. So it offers some impressive performance given just how thin and light this is. You can even get away with a bit of light gaming, but we'll come back to that in a second. Then there's the design and we get this all aluminium unibody, uh, which weighs just 1.33 kilograms, which I think is about 2.93 pounds, and it's just 14.6 millimeters thick. So that's pretty impressive for a 14 inch laptop. Build quality is top notch and little things like being able to open it with one finger or the lack of flex in the keyboard or the screen, it definitely looks and feels like a premium laptop. Plus we get this huge precision touchpad, a well-spaced backlit keyboard, which while fairly shallow still feels great to type on, plus a solid range of ports, including a headphone jack, two USB-Cs, one of which is Thunderbolt 3, and a USB-A port, which you don't see very often on these kind of laptops. And if that's not enough, you also get this guy bundled in the box. It's a USB-C adapter, which gives you another USB-A, USB-C, VGA, and also a full-size HDMI. I wish more companies would bundle good adapters like this in the box. We also get a fingerprint reader that's built into the power button. It supports Windows Hello, and so with just one press, it'll power on and log you in. And we also get quad speakers with Dolby Atmos support, which I'd say offer the best sound quality you can get on a laptop this size. Then we have this guy, the little recessed webcam, which is on the function row at the top of the keyboard. The quality is actually pretty good uh, for a one megapixel webcam. But of course, in that position, if I was say just looking at the screen and typing notes, then you're gonna see the top of my fingers and oh, my nose a little bit. So while it's a nice design for the you know security conscious of you, so you don't have to put tape over your webcam, in this crazy world of coronavirus and lockdowns where you know video calls and web conferencing is a lot more important, I think personally going forward, maybe on the next year's model, I wouldn't mind seeing it on the top bezel, but it's a nifty design. As for the screen, we get a three by two aspect ratio on the 13.9 inch display, which means it's a little taller and squarer than your typical 16 by nine, but personally, I much prefer it. The extra vertical space makes websites and programs feel a lot more comfortable to use. But the flip side is we get slightly bigger letterboxing when watching videos and movies. So the X-Pro comes with a 3000 by 2000 resolution, also known as 3K. And that's the same as the Surface Book 3 from Microsoft, for example. And it works out at 260 pixels per inch. For context, the Apple MacBook Pro 13 gives us 227 PPI. So I think this is a really good balance between being sharper than Full HD, but not quite the battery draining overkill that 4K is on a screen this size. And it's also a touchscreen which comes in handy, and you can always buy Huawei stylus pen for more precise digital drawing. And in terms of color, I measured 98% sRGB, 75% Adobe RGB, and 75% DCI-P3. So it's not the most color accurate screen, but it's good enough for most of us, and I'd still happily edit a video or photo on it. And if you are a professional where color accuracy is really important, then I'd just suggest outputting from the Thunderbolt 3 port to a professionally calibrated external monitor. Now I want to switch gears just for a second because I think one of the most underrated features of the MateBook X Pro is the fact that we get the GeForce MX250 graphics chip instead of the usual integrated chip you get with the processor. Although I must say it's a little bit disappointing uh, that for the second year in a row we're getting the MX250 rather than Nvidia's brand new MX350, but that could be a conscious decision from Huawei to balance performance with battery life. But let me show you what it means to have an MX250 because over here I've got the Dell XPS 13, the 9300, which is uh, the latest model and it comes with an i7 10th gen processor. Uh, which also includes their fastest Iris Plus graphics. 
In Geekbench 5, the MateBook X Pro was 15% faster in the OpenCL benchmark, and while well, there's no competition in the CUDA benchmark as the Iris Plus doesn't support it. But the extra horsepower of the MX250 combined with much better driver support for games through the GeForce Experience app, while at 1080p with medium settings, the MateBook averaged 45 FPS in Rainbow Six Siege, versus just 36 on the Dell, so that's a 25% boost. And then in Fortnite, same settings, 59 FPS on the MateBook, 50 on the Dell, so that's 18% faster. Now the MX250 didn't make a significant difference in my Premiere Pro 4K export test though, it was just 2.5% faster. But every little helps, and across the board, the MX250 is faster than the Intel graphics. So performance in the X Pro is impressive, but I did notice a little bit of throttling and it does get quite hot. Under heavy load, I measured the processor peaking at 100 degrees Celsius. It's not uncommon for this form factor with more powerful components, but on the inside, you can see we only have one fan. And even with Huawei's shark fin technology to improve airflow, I think with the MX250 as well, a second fan would have been good to see. On the outside, I measured a peak of 46 Celsius towards the top of the keyboard, which is quite hot actually. But again, this is only when you really push it. One slight criticism I do have with this when it comes to the hardware is the fact that we're still getting slower and older DDR3 RAM, 2133 megahertz. Most high-end premium 2020 Ultrabooks will come with faster DDR4. I gave Apple a bit of a hard time for this uh, because we get that same slow RAM in the base MacBook Pro 13, whereas the more expensive 10th Gen 1 comes with the faster RAM. So it would have been nice to see uh, DDR4 on this. It doesn't make a massive difference in real life, but it probably is the slowest component of the MateBook X Pro and possibly therefore bottlenecks it a little bit. Uh, so perhaps next year it will be good to see DDR4. But despite this, the X Pro still feels incredibly responsive and there's plenty of power on tap for pretty much everything you need from moderate photo and video editing and even light gaming. Plus with 512 gigs of storage on the base model, there's never any shortage of space. As for battery life, we get a 56 watt hour battery and one hour of YouTube at 50% brightness used 14%. So in my experience with normal use using Wi-Fi, I got around seven and a half hours of battery for the MateBook, which is very good given the spec and the high-res screen. And while it does depend on your usage, it should get you through a full working day. One more trip over here because uh, I forgot I've been using the uh, supercharger. This is the uh, 65 watt supercharger that comes bundled with the MateBook X Pro. And it'll top this up from dead to about 50% in just 40 minutes. Although a full charge takes about two and a half hours. So uh, that is a little bit longer. But uh, because this is using Huawei's supercharge technology, you can then plug it into a compatible Huawei phone and you'll get uh, super fast charging with this as well. So it means you only have to carry one charger with you when you go on your travels, which is handy. And finally, in terms of productivity, one of the MateBook's unique features is Huawei Share. And so if you do have a Huawei phone running EMUI 10.1 or later, or an Honor phone running Magic UI 3.1 or later, you can use the new full multi-collaboration functionality. Just tap your phone on the laptop to connect, and then as well as being able to quickly transfer files between them, you can now get a pop-out window on the desktop with the full phone screen. You can use the keyboard and touchpad to control it, you get access to Android apps while running Windows, and you can drag and drop files between them. It's pretty cool, assuming you have a Huawei or Honor phone. So far, so good then, but no laptop is perfect, and there are a few little things that I wouldn't mind seeing improve perhaps on the next version of this. Firstly, we're still getting Wi-Fi 5, there's no Wi-Fi 6 in here, which is a bit of a shame. Also, as I mentioned, it would have been good to get that newer MX350 graphics chip from NVIDIA, although as I say, that could be a decision uh, around balancing battery life and performance. And actually, bearing in mind the fairly hot temperatures that we recorded from this, it probably isn't a good idea uh, to put something even more powerful in here, unless, of course, they can improve the airflow, or even better, maybe just add a second fan. It would also have been nice to see DDR4 RAM in here, and also, while subjective, personally, I wouldn't mind having the webcam on the top uh, rather than down here because, as I say, well, it's good for privacy, it's not the best position. But altogether, the MateBook X Pro is a great thin and light laptop. There's not a whole lot new here, but the upgrade to 10th gen is good to see. I think most of us would be best off with the base i5 model for £1,400. You can pay £300 more for the i7 if you want. And also, there is a cheaper version in some regions, I think in Europe, uh, that don't actually come with the MX250 chip. You just get the Intel UHD graphics, but I think 
for me at least one of the selling points of this is that extra graphics performance when it comes to games and graphically demanding apps. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy a new X Pro or perhaps even uh, one of the MateBook D series which I covered recently and I'll uh, put little cards up so you can check those out afterwards. Let me know what you think on the MateBook in the comments below and I've also put links if you do want to check this out or find out more. Thank you so much for watching guys and if you do want to see more from me then don't forget to hit that little subscribe button down below and hopefully I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.